So our response to all of this um, is to say we can do better than turning down wind farms. Um, we can make space for wind farms and we can do that by creating a new service, which is what we've done. So instead of turning off wind farms, um, there are other things we can turn off. If a, if a hydropower station has a reservoir and the reservoir is, um, uh, is, is not full and about to spill, you can turn off the hydro. You could turn off uh, load, for example, here you have greenhouse lights and you could turn off combined heat and power um, stations and you can, you can do that. When I say turn off load, apologies, I'm going back there, you can turn on load. That's greenhouse lights that we turn on in order to absorb that extra wind energy. Or we can turn off combined heat and power generators. Now those, uh, some have heat stores, some are associated with, uh, uh, with district heating, some are associated with, uh, with horticulture, um, and every single um, CHP site has its own nuances, um, which we adapt to, and I'll explain um, shortly how, how that's done. That, that is true of every site. Every site has its own constraints and its own limits. And one of the secrets of this is the flexibility that we have that allows us to deal with those differences. So another view of the same thing, um, we are, instead of turning off wind farms, we want to turn down CHP, we want to turn down anaerobic digestion, turn down biomass generation, turn down hydropower where it has reservoirs. We want to absorb energy and energy storage potentially, to turn up industrial load, um, to turn up heating or cooling where that is genuine load. And the key to making sure that these things are genuine is storage or inertia. Every process that's involved in footroom needs to have some form of storage or inertia associated with it. In order to make sure that we um, keep things tidy and tight, um, we apply certain principles to, to footroom. The first one is not something that is imposed on us by the contract, but it's something that we impose on ourselves. There should be no waste here. Um, so uh, there's no load banks in footroom. There's no blasting heat into the sky. That is not an option. Um, on the other hand, um, uh, for a hydropower station, um, spilling rocks is not acceptable either. And the same is true for landfill gas. Um, flaring the methane is not, is, 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 is not an option. Um, for district heating, um, letting the heat customers go is also not an option. So, so you can't miss an opportunity to, um, uh, to, to deliver um, low carbon heat to your customers. Um, so that's the no waste principle. The second um, principle is some um, limits. Um, this is one that we apply up the way to national grid and we design the contract to allow us to do that. There are limits on the maximum duration um, uh, which we can apply ad hoc to any um, resource. And we can apply limits to the number of events that we see um, either through pricing uh, or through um, simply withdrawing the service when it suits us, we can do that. And then the other, the other uh, point that we make is that uh, this is an automated service as far as it affects energy partners, as far as it affects generator users um, uh, and industrial loads, it's automated. We are not going to be phoning people up in the middle of the night. Um, this is something that we are going to be doing um, ourselves with our own 24-hour control room um, and through the outstations that we, that we routinely deploy and that we have in, um, uh, apologies, I have lost count, it must be um, 100 odd sites now. Um, all of that backs into a commercial approach on the right hand side and um, the commercial approach allows us to opt out whenever we want. The, pro the contract is flexible and that means that, that um, uh, there, is, there is no penalty associated with opting out or indeed opting in. It's a no penalty contract. Um, the protections that we normally apply, automatic and manual opt-out, continues to be present. So there is an inhibit switch. We can be locked out by the site if the site needs to do that. Um, and we can also teach the outstation to automatically apply limits that might have to do with temperature, tank levels, um, uh, with whatever the, the constraints of a particular site may be. Um, and then there's the matter of cost, because most sites will incur some kind of a cost, however small, to deliver footroom. Footroom is an energy-only service. There's no availability payment, and therefore all of the profit must be made through the delivery of negative reserve. Um, that means actually turning down generation or actually turning up consumption. Um, and wherever there are costs, we have to identify those and ensure that we recover those and recover the profit 
in the energy delivery or the negative energy delivery event. And if a site has a particular set of circumstances that mean that um, the, 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 the profit um, that they would make from, uh, from a dispatch uh, on that particular day is insufficient, we simply withdraw that site for that day. Now, the other side of that, of course, is that there are um, uh, physical expectations as to how we can deliver, and these are pretty soft as well. Um, this is the slowest start time that we've ever been asked to achieve. 30 minutes um, is the, the notional um, start time. Two hours is fine. I, don't, I can't think of a single asset that we work with that needs two hours to get going, or indeed that needs 30 minutes to get going. Um, we expect that footroom events will be between roughly one to three hours. But if there is a site that can only do half an hour, that site can still participate. It's merely a matter of constraining it, which I'll show you later. For a site that's fully available for footroom and doesn't impose any constraints, we would expect to see approximately 400 hours of, of, of event per annum, mostly at night. And again, we can, we can limit that. Financial rewards, um, we've been uh, conservative uh, uh, here, we believe, um, uh, and we think 15 to 35,000 pounds per megawatt per annum is the range that we're looking at. Um, that is based on real market data, and it's based on assumptions about what we think we can do to undercut the, the turning off of wind farms, because that's what we're doing here. We're, we're undercutting the turn down. This, of course, depends on the availability. If a resource makes itself available for footroom 50% of the time, then it's, it's, uh, uh, it's obviously going to see a, a commensurate change in the, in the, in the revenue. Um, and also, it depends on the price. If a resource wants very few events, we put the price up. Um, if a resource wants to catch every event that's going, we put the price down. The latter will tend to make more money than the former. That's, um, uh, that mirrors what happens in short-term operating reserve. And uh, there is the, 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 the matter that um, uh, a, a, a footroom asset, a footroom resource, a load or a generator that is conveniently located um, in an area where National Grid has a particular problem um, is going to earn more than uh, a unit that is located um, somewhere where National Grid doesn't have a problem. Just a quick jump through the technical side. Um, uh, I think most people will be familiar with our outstation approach. We're not changing that. Um, it's defensively engineered. The dispatch is electronic. It's connected to the 24-hour control room. We measure electricity consumption or generation in real time. Operationally, there should be um, uh, little or no involvement from, from site staff required. And then as we operate it from National Grid's viewpoint, well actually um, this is a much more manual process and we do the manual process. So this, this doesn't require manual intervention from sites except if you want to tell us something about the, the, the technical or financial constraints that your site might be under on that particular day. So every day it is up to us to send National Grid a, uh, a set of prices and, avail and predictions of available megawatts in, uh, in, in each of the groups that we're offering. Um, and we do that, um, uh, we've actually managed to get National Grid away from faxes for this particular um, service, which is great, and we're going to use emails. So every day we send National Grid an email round about lunchtime telling them our estimation, and it is an estimation, of the available negative reserve in various groups. And we will group things predominantly geographically where we can. Um, you can see in this particular instance, um, I've got some uh, uh, tightly specified groups. I've got the Isle of Thanet, um, uh, and that obviously is uh, because of the London Array and the Thanet wind farm, um, both of which connect in that area, and both of which are connected to an area of voltage uh, management issues for National Grid. So that's a bit special and a bit handy. Um, we, we may have um, assets in Northwest Scotland. That's another particularly difficult area. Um, we might group separately a bunch of assets that are spread across Scotland, and that obviously is addressing the cross-border um, connections. And we might have assets that are just generally spread around. Um, so I've got one group there that we've labeled GB. That group is going to get fewer calls, for example, um, than the group in Northwest Scotland. And we can profile the price. I've not profiled it here, but we can set a different price for every half hour. 
we can have a different number of megawatts for every half hour. These are negative numbers because essentially we're asking grid, um, uh, we're, we're, we're essentially asking grid to sell us electricity at negative prices. That's formally what this is. And we can make changes to this at any time. If there's a reason why a site needs to withdraw, then we can tell National Grid by emailing them a different spreadsheet that the numbers have changed, so we can do that at any time. They like us to do it at least two hours ahead, um, but there are no consequences for, for doing it closer in, and we have the, uh, the rights, in fact, the duty to, 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 to do that. 